So before you mentioned um, about uh, risk management and risk analysis being an important part of the job, mm. uh, and it does seem like there's a lot can go wrong with algorithmic trading. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, can you just give me an overview of how you go about managing risks? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I brought up the sort of the flash crash of 2010 before. Things are going to go wrong, I think is the attitude to approach it with. Things are going to go wrong. You are going to be on the wrong side of a trade at some point. Some sort of global event is going to happen. That is a systemic risk to the market, COVID, black swan events, things like that, that almost no one is going to predict, right? You're going to be in a bad position. So um, so the key is really to have proper risk management so that if these events happen, you can manage it yourself. You're not super exposed. Um, funnily enough, Data Camp actually has a really good course on, on quant finance with a few risk management models that are, that are actually mentioned there. And one from that, from that course is the VAR model, the VAR or the value at risk model. Um, and that, that's a pretty key model that is sort of the base of any risk management, risk management um, strategy. So, so yeah, it really is just very similar. Again, a lot of mathematical statistical models that you can use to constantly track your position. But I think where you see companies go wrong is often attitude. It's not a lack of technical skill. It's not a lack of the models, but it's attitude to their investment. And that's where they go wrong, get themselves in trouble. Uh, that's interesting that the problem isn't necessarily just um, the statistics behind things. It, it's a cultural thing. That's right. Could you maybe expand on that a bit? Yeah, I mean, you think of some, sort of some of these collapses that have happened previously. I suppose FTX is maybe a very global case that every listener will be aware of. FTX had incredibly smart people, right? They were incredibly smart developers. Um, you know, SPF worked at Jane Street, a, a well-known sort of quant finance firm that sort of hires very intelligent people. He was a smart guy, but it was an attitude problem there, right? And very clearly they were doing things that was illegal. Uh, it wasn't that they didn't have smart people. It wasn't they couldn't build out these models. It was that they didn't want to, and they were just doing illegal things. So, yeah, so it's very much an attitude to risk management that is really the foundation rather than your model itself. That's the stepping stone. Okay, so in that case, it seemed like... Um because there was illegal activity they were just like okay we, we we believe what we're doing and we're just going to go for it regardless of anything else that's right um, yeah i think that that's maybe not the case in a lot of organizations like you're probably still doing legal things yeah. but they're still vulnerable to uh treating risks badly that's right are there any sort of cultural warning signs you can think of where you think okay maybe risk management isn't being taken seriously yeah, I suppose um, most companies have a compliance department. So you'll have compliance essentially reviewing trades um, and even trades themselves be reviewing trades. So a very common thing is post-trade analysis where you will look at your trades. And as I mentioned before, the machine learning, you should understand them. You should understand why those trades happened. If you lost money on a trade, that's okay. You're going to lose money on a trade every single day. But why did it happen? Why did you enter that position? Why did it come out badly? I think that constant attitude of self-reflection is really important. Um, and I think if you see that absence of that, if you see that absence of not really caring or that absence of not really wanting to reflect and debrief, then that's a concern. Uh, so I find this very interesting. So um, at Data Camp, we have this idea of like uh, intellectual honesty where, you know, if you do something silly, you got to like acknowledge right. that you, you've done yeah. something wrong. That's right. Um, so yeah, that's absolutely fascinating that you do need some kind of review process and you do need to acknowledge where you've made mistakes in order to stop them in the future. Yeah. Um, just on the subject of risk, um, how, um, uh, how is risk dealt with by, um, analysts? Is it a separate team that's involved in thinking about risk or is it something that analysts would have to, um, worry about themselves? Yeah, it's generally a separate team. You'll have a team of risk management professionals who, who will do that. Um, and then developers who are geared towards building risk models as well. So people who are pretty professional at that. It's always something that should be should be front of mind for everyone. And, um, and a lot of the reporting is pretty open when it comes to risk management. So a lot of the reporting is seen by everyone or a lot of the metrics that attract for risk management are seen by everyone so that people can have a pretty transparent view of what's going on. Um, but yeah, there are specialist teams for this sort of thing. 